Hello designers, welcome back if you're subscribed and welcome here if you're new. In this video, we'll talk about how to add your own background to your favorite HDRI lighting so you can have total control over your project's location or scenery. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you or if you found it useful. Over here, I have a small rustic kitchen scene with the window as my focal point. And out here, I have my dome light widget, which doesn't have to be outside for it to work, but I prefer it that way so it doesn't interfere with my modeling process. If we take a look at my environment setup, you'll see that I have a very light blue color assigned and the same HDR I used for the dome light loaded as a texture for the GI and everything under it. That part is completely optional. As for the sunlight, I adjusted the shadows so the light comes in through the window and assigned another light blue color to the sunlight, but this one is a bit darker. Color mode is set to override, so I can get nice cool rays coming into my scene. The intensity is set to 0.2, and the size is 100. This makes the sunlight blurred and soft, so it basically lights up the scene and casts soft shadows without being obvious. For the sky settings, I just changed the sky model to CIE clear and left the rest of the options in their default state. Now the dome light. I assigned a partially cloudy HDRI as the texture and set the intensity to 4. You can see that this HDRI casts a clear shadow. So I fixed that by enabling Use Transform and rotating the widget so my HDRI doesn't cast any sharp light or shadows into my scene. Of course, I changed the shape, the sphere, and made sure that Adaptive is enabled since I'm using the array next. I've already done a test render of the scene without a background and only the HDRI. Here's the result. I chose this HDRI for the sky, but I'm not too fond of the scenery. It's a bit too far away and gives the feeling that this house is on the edge of a cliff or hill. This is not what I'm looking for. The sky, however, is the right match for what I have in mind and is realistic to the location of the scene, which is where I live. Now that the lighting is all set, let's bring in the background. I chose this tree-line background because it's also realistic to the location of the scene and because when I adjust it, I'll be able to see the sky above the thicket and that the thicket is uneven with multiple highs and lows which creates a bit of a visual interest. A lot of these ready-made background models are available on 3D Warehouse, but you can find a tutorial on my channel on how to create your own which I'll link up in the cards and below the video. Press Ctrl X on your keyboard to cut the object and Ctrl V to paste it into your scene. Then using the move tool, you can start adjusting the position of your background by checking how it looks from the inside. To avoid issues with scale and realism, align the bottom edge of the background with the bottom of your model's floor. You can then push it back or bring it forward to get a correct approximate size ratio between the trees and your model scale.
If the move tool isn't helping much, you can try scaling the background up or down. In my case here, I need to scale the object down. You can see that when I change my camera angle here, the view changes, which is pretty awesome. You can now see the sky from the trees, but I need to scale it down a little bit more so I can get more sky showing. Now it's perfect. I'll do a quick interactive render to see how this looks. The image of the trees is quite dark. And this isn't normal, but it's typical with models imported from 3D Warehouse or with images that are missing from their location on your drive. To get a clear view of what I mean, I'll do a quick test render to show you. See here, the trees are basically a very dark, ominous object in the background that's completely unrealistic. The fix for this problem is actually quite simple and applies to all texture images that render darker than normal. Select the texture with the eyedropper tool and give it a proper name so you can easily find it later. Then in the Materials window, click the Edit tab. Under Texture, click the small button that says Edit Texture Image in External Editor when you hover over it. This will open the texture image in your system's default image viewer. Now we need to save this image in a known location on the drive. If you're using Windows, you can follow the steps you see here on the screen and save it anywhere you want. If you're using iOS, then I'm sure a quick Google search will show you how to replicate this process. Sorry about that. Now go back to V-Ray and click the texture icon next to the fuse. Browse for the image you just saved and select it as the texture. You won't notice much change in the material viewer of V-Ray, but I assure you it'll render much brighter, which you'll see in a moment. For an added oomph, you can copy the texture and paste it as a bump map. This is completely optional, but I find that it gives the image a bit more dimension because the bright parts of the image will become more pronounced than the darker ones. This is the part where my mouse gets glitchy, so bear with me here. A quick interactive render to make sure everything is working as planned. There, you can see that the trees are noticeably brighter. So now we're ready for a final render.
Here's a before and after. There is a raw and edited version. Hope you found this tutorial useful, and if so, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and stay safe.